Hi, this is Chris at OPT, and we are now on part number three of our videos on MaximDL. For those of you who've seen parts one and two, you'll know that we covered details of the camera tab with the expose, guide, and setup options here, showing you how to set up a camera, a filter wheel, an auto guider, as well as how to set up a multi-filter sequence, as well as adjust your guiding parameters. For part three, we're going to go to the observatory control window here. This will actually allow you to set up multiple parts of equipment that don't fall under the camera tab, such as a telescope, a focuser, a dome, a webcam, and weather stations as well. So if you go to the option here under ASCOM. Now you do have to have the ASCOM platform installed. So if you go to ASCOM-standards.org and download platform 6.3, which is current as of now, then that needs to be installed first and foremost and any equipment you're planning to connect needs to connect via the ASCOM control. So in this case, we're gonna use simulator and the first time you select something, you have to go to Properties and select the actual equipment you're using, whether it's an Altazimuth Equatorial or German Equatorial mount, the slew rates, your information for your location on Earth, as well as some information about your optics. Now this will change based off of the individual telescope or mount you choose as well as what's been put into the driver by the author of the ASCOM driver for that piece of equipment. So if we say OK, we're selected here, we can say OK, and I want to select Focuser. Again, in this case, we're going to do a simulator because we don't have any actual equipment hooked up to this computer at the moment. You set up, in this case, position, step size, and maximum increment, and hit OK just leave that as it was. In this case here we want to connect to the telescope and connect to the focuser. The main reason for that is to allow you to set up focusing routines as well as other behaviors through MaximDL. So first focus. If you go to the focus tab here you're connected to your focuser. You're currently at the midpoint position. In this case the simulator has 50,000 positions and it's reading off a fake temperature but if your focuser has a temperature compensation or temperature measurement probe this will actually measure the temperature that it's reading. So if we tell it to start autofocus what it does is it connects to the camera, takes a picture, and then picks a star. So what it's doing is it's taking a picture at various positions and then reading out a graph. Now because this is a simulator, unfortunately, we are not getting accurate information. But were this an actual camera on an actual telescope, as you move the focuser in one direction, the star will go out of focus one way. As you move the focuser the other direction, it'll go out of focus the other direction. So if you can map various points at various positions, you get what looks like a letter V on this chart. And what the software does is it goes up and measures both slopes, finds the point in the middle, and says, okay, this is best focus. So you can imagine this is our V right here. It looks at the slopes of both of these sets of points, and it would select this as our best focus. You can adjust the step size, you can adjust backlash. All of that will be dependent on what brand and model of focuser you're using. So don't be afraid to make adjustments to that as long as you recall what your starting settings are. For telescope control, this can be useful for a couple of different reasons. Certain mounts use what's called pulse guide or guiding via serial port instead of using a relay connection. So if you're connected to the telescope, if you go to your guide settings right here, you can change control to guide via telescope. This way, when your auto guider sends a command, it's actually bumping the mount, making very small movements to the mount's position in the sky versus sending an electrical impulse down the phone cable you would have with a typical auto guider connection. This can be useful for some brands of mounts 
where the cable is not available for every camera like some Takahashi mounts or other more exotic mounts that may not have a conventional auto guider connection. Well, this is a little step in the direction of getting all of your equipment set up. Take time to explore the different options on the observatory window here. With the telescope tab, set up all your equipment. This will help you control the focus of your setup as well as change the way your mount may be guiding. Our next video is going to actually cover what to do when you've captured some data relating to standard calibration files as well as light files, so please look out for that. Once again, this is Chris at OPT. Thanks for watching.